What we're going to be looking at here is LIFO inventory liquidation. Now, what we mean by LIFO here, this is where the last inventory in is the first inventory out. It stands for LIFO here. So the last goods that are purchased or made are the first ones used here. And uh, what we mean by LIFO liquidation here is where we're going to be making some purchases here uh, for each year here. And what happens here is we make, we purchase more inventory than we actually sell. So we have some ending inventory here for each period here and then this ending inventory is carried over as a what they call a layer an inventory layer this is where the ending inventory from past periods would be carried over here into the inventory into the next period here and as we build up these layers here uh, then at the end at some point in time we're going to actually uh, sell more than we purchased and then we're going to go back and we're going to what they call liquidate these layers or we're going to use these layers here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just lay out this problem. We're going to go through the numbers here and then we're going to be looking at some flows through some T accounts and then we'll look at uh, this life of liquidation and how it affects our profits here. So first off to go through our problem here we're going to have purchases here that we make each year and they're going to uh, the, the price is going to increase each year here in our purchased uh, items here and then we're going to have uh, in this case we're going to be looking at five years here. So uh, just going through our uh, first example here for year one we're going to make a purchase here 100 units at $20 so this is key here the purchase price on these units and then we're going to sell 90 here uh, for year one. Uh, the uh, price here I have for the sales price this isn't really going to become a factor here in this case we're just going to be looking at the purchases here and number of purchased uh, the uh, quantity or the price that it's purchased at and then the quantity that's sold here for the period. So our ending inventory here for 20x1 or year x1 would be the purchases here we have 100 less the 90 in sales that gives us 10 remaining here in our ending inventory at $20 each. And then for X2, uh, we're going to have purchased here 110 units, sold 105. So the difference here between the 110 sold and 105 gives us five units here remaining in ending inventory at $25 each, the purchase price here. And then for 20X3, in this case, we're going to actually sell more than we purchase here. We're going to purchase 115. We're going to have sales here for 117 so uh, units here. So we're going to have to dig into our this is for 20x3 that we're talking about here. So we're going to have to go back to 20x2 here and use some of that inventory here to cover our purchases here for 20x3. So uh, we're too short here for 20x3 and subtract that here from the five, the most recent purchases here in 20x2 here. Uh, we gives us three units here at the 20x2 purchase price here of $25. And then for uh, 20x4, uh, we're going to have purchased 120 units here at $35 here, and we only sold 116. So we're going to have four remaining in the ending inventory here at 20x4, and they're going to be at $35 each, the purchase price here. And this is where we're, our life of liquidation comes in here for our, our example here. In year 20x5, we're going to have purchased 125 units, but we sell 137 units. So we're 12 units short here for our 20x5 that we purchased. So we have to go back and we have to use up our inventory in order here. The first first units would be the four here for 20x4 that's sitting in our ending inventory here. That that layer here plus the three here uh, that remains for uh, that came out of 20x2 here. Uh, units here. And then we're going to have to uh, that accounts for uh, three plus four seven and then we need to account for five more here and they're going to come out of the 20 x1 here a layer here of 10 units so we're going to have five coming out of there so now let's go down and look at our flow here to get a better understanding what's going on here uh, and we're looking at in t account here form so for lifo uh, when it began we began using lifo here in 20 x1 we had zero amount here for our our beginning inventory that's where we started LIFO but we have a debit amount here those are the purchases that we made here of 100 and then our credit amount here is going to show the number that we sold here 90 so our balance is that uh, the purchase price here plus the number of units that 
we have remaining for the period here. So remember, the ascending inventory here for 20x1 becomes a uh, part of the beginning inventory here for 20x2. We just move those 10 units up here. And remember their purchase price here at 20 units. Then we have uh, purchased 110 units here for t at 20x2, sold 105. And that gave us, uh, we have a remaining amount here of five at five units here, the difference here between those two at $25 per a unit here, the purchase price. And then remember this ending at X inventory at 20x2 becomes part of the beginning inventory here of 20x3 here. And uh, we also, those 10 units that came over from 20x2, we still didn't use those up here at their purchase price. That at, uh, from 20x1, excuse me, here they come from 20x1, plus the five units coming from 20x2 here. And then we've uh, purchased 115 units here in 20x3, used 117. And then we went through that arithmetic before here where we have taken uh, three units here out of uh, 20x2s at $25 per share. That is what remains here, our ending balance here. So that gets moved up into uh, LIFO uh, inventory here for 20x4. Again, those 10 units are sitting here from 20x1 at $20 a piece. And then we only have three here at $25 for at for 20x2 and then 20x3 well there is no units since we we have no we don't have an inventory layer here for 20x3 so what I'm, I'm going through here and when you see these uh, we're at ten dollars or, or ten units at twenty dollars three at twenty five those are all the inventory layers here so you can see at 20x3 we sold more than we purchase here so we have uh, no inventory no layer of inventory there but then we purchased 120 here in 20x4 sold 116 so we had four remaining here at $35 now you can see we move that up here into our 20x5 inventory that becomes part of our beginning balance here or a layer here in 20x5 and then we still had those 20, 10 units here uh, remaining in 20x1 here at $20 a piece and then the balance here and for 20x2 we have those three units here at 25 20x3 we don't have any there's no inventory layer there and then of course those four units here at $35 for 20x4 now this is where our liquidation comes in here uh, we purchased 125 units here for 20x5 but we sold 137 now this is where we're going to dig into those in uh, those layers here of inventory that we've accumulated between 20x1 here and 20x4 and we're going to find out uh, as we calculated up above here we're only have five units here at twenty dollars each that's part of our 20 x1 here inventory layer so let's go and look at this a little closer here this life of liquidation first by definition here life of liquidation where this is where we have a decline in inventory quantities quantities here where we sold more than purchased in the current period here and for our example here if I didn't mention it in this case for our in this life of liquidation, we would have increasing prices here in the inventory. So we have an increasing price in our inventory each period here. And with the older costs in the LIFO layer, when they're liquidated, they aren't matched here with the current sales dollars. So uh, we have previously ignored holding gains that are included in net income. As the old layers are liquidated, this inflates the profit margin, and we'll look at that here. So again, to go over our, our numbers here for 20x5 here. Uh, we had said uh, well first off we this is where the liquidation we'll go through it one more time here we purchased 125 units we sold 137 units here so where did the 137 uh, where did where did the difference here there's actually here 125 purchase sold 137 so we have 12 that have to come out of our previous uh, inventory layers. So four of them here again come out of the uh, 20x4 year here at $35 each. None for 20x3 since we didn't have any inventory layer there. And three of them came out of the at $25 each year for 20x2. And then the remaining five comes out of the 10 units here at $20 each for year 20x1. So we still have five units here at $20 each here uh, for to, uh, five, uh, five units at $20 each year for year 20x1. So what has happened here, We've this is where our liquidation comes in here. We start using up these units here, and uh, the older units have a, a lower price or a lower cost. Therefore, we're going to have a difference here in our income. We're going to have uh, older costs here aren't going to be matched with the current uh, price. What, what we're having here is we're 
if we had sold these here units here uh, 20x1 we would have had a matched our if we sold them in the year 20x1 we would have matched our inventory here with our sales price and in this case we don't so we got lower prices here with the older inventories and they aren't matched with the new prices that we're selling at here now let's go back and let's look at how we'd calculate our profit here so uh, Again, LIFO liquidation profit here. You take um, your the difference here in your inventory here. You had the, the amount here that you purchased less the ending inventory. We remember we went through all those here. We're 20x1. We had 20 at uh, 10 here units at $20. So what we do here, we take the most recent purchase price or the uh, newest purchase price. This was $40 here. Uh, that was the last purchase that we made here of 125 units. They're at $40 each. And we have to compare that to the purchase price that we made for the particular year, the inventory layer that we look at. So in this case, in 20X1, we had those 10 units. Well, we actually had five units left over here. So we had $40 each here that was the purchase price here in 20x5 less the purchase price here in 20x1 20 dollars and the difference here we take that times the five units sitting here so we got a hundred dollars here in profit in this example here for 20x2 well we have to go and we'll just take the three units that were remaining here at, and they were priced at 25 dollars each we take the purchase price here of 20x5 that was 40 dollars here less those 25 dollar purchased uh, price here for this 20x2 units times the three remaining that gives us $45 here and then for 20x4 we remember we had the difference here the four units sitting here at $35 each so we would again compare that to the $40 purchase price here at um, 20x5 40 less the 35 and the four units here uh, t times the difference here gives us $20 so here we've had we've accounted for our 12 units here that we had to liquidate here in 20x5 that is we had to take out of our earlier layers here and the total amount here for this liquidation profit here is 165 dollars so what we're doing here just to refresh here we take the current cost minus minus the lifo layer cost here the current cost here was 40 dollars less whatever the layer cost or the price that we paid for the inventory at each one of those period here times the quantity liquidated that gives us our profit here so what we're looking at you can see the difference here because we paid less for the earlier units here than what we're paying here at our current price so the difference between those uh, two amounts here times the quantity sitting in our inventory layer gives us the LIFO liquidation profit.